What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode. Last week, we talked about what it will take to preserve our Passport 42 like a time capsule, which featured a few clips from the process on our last boat, an Allied Seawind 32. We also found a crack in part of the standing rigging that is holding up our mast. This is not a drill, folks. Insert video of dismasting. Yachting Monthly's YouTube channel purposely dismasted a boat to show what it's like and what it takes to try and cut the rig away and also salvage as much as you can while being pitched and rolled in gale force conditions and waves. This video is very interesting and is linked in the description below. A rigging failure while at sea can be expensive at best and deadly at worst. We are very grateful to have discovered this at the dock rather than at sea. This week I am home alone and Steve the local rigger inspects the entire rig on Boundless looking for anything else that might need replacing. Well, it's not off to a great start. Right? When things get delayed like that, you just have to say you're not supposed to be on that plane. So all my plane got delayed like two or three times and then that means I missed my, oh, I would have missed my connection in Atlanta. So I had to rebook my flight from Atlanta to Austin. I'll let my boss know that it won't be until later today, which is okay. And uh, I have plenty of things to keep me busy today. Looks safe to get in there. <gasps> yep, <laughs> Parker's like, I just want you to safely get in there. Me too. <laughs> I'm not in my way. Okay. Love you. Love you. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay, Parker. All right. Good day, my friend. Thanks. Mucho. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, mucho. <laughs> hey, little one. Ooh. She's feisty. Uh, hi. Hi. She was grabbing. Good morning. See all those scars on my hand? Those are from my cats at home. Mmm. Good morning, little one. Grab it, grab it, grab it. Hey, sweetie, are you little squinty? What's up, everyone? Katie just left. It was a weird night. We didn't sleep well. Uh, her flight was supposed to be much earlier, so she was all ready to leave at 4 a.m. from the marina here for the one and a, like one and a half hour drive-ish to Panama City Airport. Well, we woke up about two in the morning and there was a bunch of delay notifications. And so she had to rebook her flight which then meant she had to leave at 6.30 a.m. And then the taxi driver that was scheduled, is, he had to wait around then. And anyway, he was, he was very gracious. Johnny, he is an amazing person. We're so glad that we met him and that he's uh, now our taxi driver. So I am here by myself for a week. I'm gonna do what any responsible person with a list of projects would do, tear the boat apart. Shh, don't tell Katie. We have a crack that I found on our backstay tensioner. Uh, the backstay is a very important part of all of the cables that hold up the rig. They are called shrouds or forestays or backstays, depending on which position they are in the boat.
Hmm, it needs a little something. Ah, there we go. So this is going to be the diagram we use for Boundless's rig. Actually, it's called a Bermuda rig developed in the Bermuda archipelago and referring to taller masts held up by wire cables and triangular shaped mainsails, which was a huge innovation that happened in the sailing world in the early 20th century. This is in comparison to the more traditional trapezoidal sails at the time. Boundless is a Bermudian cutter referring to two head sails instead of just one. A little fun fact, you may also hear it called a Marconi rig, which is because of the unrelated fact that, sorry for the pronunciation, Guglielmo Marconi, an Italian inventor born in April 1874, grew up, became fascinated with the electromagnetic waves proved to exist by Heinrich Rudolf Hertz, a German physicist in 1888. Marconi then developed antennas and equipment that achieved the first transatlantic radio transmission in 1901, which he won a Nobel Prize for. This all was happening simultaneously with the sailboat golden age of innovation, and people started calling the new Bermuda rig a Marconi rig because of the resemblance of the antennas and sailboat masts being held up by cables. This nickname stuck, and even today, people use Marconi to describe the rig. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar, there are two rigging categories on a sailboat. First is the standing rigging, which is everything you see here. It consists of stainless steel wire and various fittings at each end to connect to the mast and to the chain plates. They are tensioned with turnbuckles, and while doing so, it is called tuning the rig. When standing rigging is tuned correctly, the mast is held in place and supported evenly at all attachment points while sailing, on any point of sail. The other rigging is called the running rigging, and this is all the lines that control the sails, halyards, sheets, etc. If you've watched any of our videos of hoisting the mainsail, furling out the headsails, or trimming the mainsail or jibs, then you have seen us using running rigging. Okay, back to the standing rigging. On the right side of the screen, you can see our standing rigging that holds up the mast from side to side. The cap shroud in pink and the intermediate shroud in green on either side support the mast from deck level up to two different points on the mast. The cap goes to the top and the intermediate just under the upper spreaders. They both are held out away from the mast by the spreaders, which makes the rig's support left to right much wider and therefore stronger. Each side also has two lower shrouds in yellow, as you can see on the left diagram looking side on. All of the shrouds attach at deck level to the chain plates that are bolted to the hull. The other four wires are called stays, four stay, inner four stay, two check stays, and a back stay. These all support the mast fore and aft. The check stays in blue attach to chain plates by the other shrouds on either side of the boat, but the purpose of the check stay is to support the inner fore stay in brown fore and aft while using the staysail. The fore stay in black attaches at the masthead and at the tip of the bow, and is where the big jib or Genoa headsail is attached. Last but not least is the back stay in red. If you look closely, you'll notice that if any one of the shrouds, forestays, or check stays were to break while sailing, the mast would most likely stay standing because there are plenty of other wires supporting those areas. The backstay is a different story altogether. It is, in all its lonesome, the only thing supporting the back of the mast, and if it were to break, the springing forward of the top of the mast, coupled with the pressure of the sails on the front of the boat, would most likely cause the mast to break, as I showed an example of earlier. Our backstay tensioner is situated here, at the back of the boat, and it is there so we can control the amount of tension there is on the backstay, and in turn on the head sails. This is used to change the shape of the sail for sailing upwind or downwind. Now, we have a crack in the backstay tensioner. This is bad news, and although I've had some people say that they would just get it welded, I'd rather play it safe and replace it. Here's what Steve the Rigger had to say when he came to look at it. Hey, Steve. Hello. Yeah, 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 come aboard. I've only been on this boat once. Ah, uh -huh. well, here's number two. Yeah. I haven't ever, ever seen it down below. Oh, yeah, you're more than it's welcome. A, is it a passport? It's a passport, yeah. yeah it's 40, a good boat, eh? 42. Passports on good boats. Yeah, I can get my fingernail in it. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you see it. Yeah, that? yeah, you yeah, see, yeah, it, see it there, yeah. yeah. Have you got back slip sweaters or what? Uh, no, no, uh, they're in line. Okay, so then you're off. <laughs> yeah. If you lose this, you lose the rig. Right, yeah. The, a four-stay can go because we have a double four-stay because of the yeah. kind of rig. And we have <laughs> but a if you haven't got back switch sweaters when you can't lose this. Right. 
I mean, the way he cased it is to take a vice grip, but you'd have to remove this. Right, and, right. And, and tweak it, ching, ching, ching. And if oh. any one of them moves, then you know it's uh, it's gone. It'll normally break about there. Oh, okay. Oh, about so you won't see it. You, you don't see it. What you do see, but because you've got the gunk over here, you're not going to see it, but you see a slight gap between the strands. Ah, okay. More than the other ones. So you mm -hmm. one of them will like, hey, wait a minute, there's like a, a gap here, and there isn't mm -hmm. a gap there, and you know that probably that one's gone. Mm -hmm. And if you tweak it with a vice grip, you can see it. You can see it moving. Yeah. So at some point it might fail, and then of course the orange should. Yeah. So you a better idea to change it. Mm -hmm. I I put uh, Loctite in the crack. Oh really? Like red Loctite. Yeah. And red Loctite will suck itself in, and you can see the extent of. Oh, okay. Because if you wipe it with a cloth, then it comes off. It's just a groove, mm. right? If you wipe it with a cloth and the red line stays there, yeah. it means it's inside and it's by capillary action. Right, right. Going into the actual crack and then you know you have a crack. Okay. So yeah, we have to buy a complete new backstay tensioner. This is where boat gets its meaning, break out another thousand. Selden still makes and sells this tensioner, but they no longer offer replacement parts for them. So I couldn't just replace the cracked fork. There's no price for safety in boating, and so we ordered a new backstay tensioner for a cool $1,500. A small amount compared to the roughly twenty dollars to 40000 bucks it would be to replace a mast snapped in half. The next obvious thing to do was a complete standing rigging and mast inspection, so I hoisted Steve aloft in his bosun's chair for a look. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've seen them break before, so you might some I don't know how old they are. I don't know either. What about the actual tangs through, through the mast themselves? I don't know if I have extras. I wonder if we could order some. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Do you want a you want a knife? Okay. Cracks or anything? Okay. <laughs> Falling. Okay. Do you know how old the rigging is? 2015. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is, and I would feel the bowl if there was anything. Yeah. Happening inside. On some of the spots, you'll notice up further, in some of the Roman candling, you'll see like there's actually in between the strands some bubbled up like actual yeah. rust. Yeah, like here was one. Yeah. What now? Should I like try and like just polish that out of there? Well, you can take a scotch pipe and just rub it up there. All right, ready? Yep. one block is broken, I have to replace it on the port side.
Placement. I don't know, are those proprietary or? Okay, that went well. Boy, am I sweaty. But uh, a two speed winch is actually better than I thought for taking a person up the mast. Definitely a cardiovascular workout though. Um, I'm missing a screw on one of the uh, sections of foil for the force day. So that foil that I was telling you guys about that the head sail wraps up on. The foils come in eight or 10 foot lengths, so you have to join them together to make the length of the four stay. And so it's held together by Allen key screws. And one of the screws was missing, so he thinks he has a replacement. So we're gonna uh, hopefully have that to replace. And one of the bigger issues is that uh, there, there, there is some um, things that need replaced on the standing rigging. It's just, there's a debate as to how much we're gonna replace. So we'll see what happens. see what this tastes like. You will not have Katie on screen to taste test the food. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I didn't film anything today, obviously. Here I am having dinner, it's dark outside. Yesterday, Sunday, was a whirlwind after Katie left. You probably will have seen the footage already of the rig check that Steve did it was pretty cool. We wore headsets and he went up the mast so we were able to talk at, uh, we, we were able to communicate the entire time without having to like talk at each other up and down a mast. So it was nice having him right in my ear. It was really interesting. I've never had a rigger look at a boat that I've owned. I learned a lot about what to look at when I'm inspecting a sailboat rig. So that was really, really cool to pick his brain for pretty much the entire day. It has been a ton of data gathered from it all and his opinions that seem to be very sound um, and the things that he noticed and the things that I learned, I am now trying to make a decision on what to do. I'm still crunching all this data and some numbers and I have a few options of what we can do to get the boat ready to safely travel the world now from the inspection that he did and so when Katie comes back in a couple of days we will all go over that together um, and that includes you so I'm going to enjoy this meal and then tomorrow is another computer work day I'll be making the rest of the episode it takes me about two and a half days two days to make an episode for you all so if you like these episodes, please subscribe. I can never remember to say this to the camera. It's always a voiceover afterwards, most of the time. So if you really enjoy our videos, if you like what we do, if you like what we talk about, whether it's entertainment or you learn something or you just are drawn to us, quirky couple of people for some reason, whatever the reason is, we appreciate you being here with us. A step further, if you really enjoy our videos and you're looking to support them somehow, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash sailing sea wind to check it out. All right, cheers. Next week, I tear into our bathroom in hopes to stop some leaks while we shower and to race against the clock to get it done before Katie comes home. You won't want to miss it. Thanks again for watching, everyone.